So welcome to the Compounding Center Connections, where we talk about different health conditions with our partner practitioners. I'm your host, Jay Gill, the owner and a compounding pharmacist from the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia. At the Compounding Center, we collaborate with practitioners, create custom medications to help our patients get better. In today's episode, we have Dr. Andrew Wong from Capital Integrative Health in Bethesda, Maryland. And today's topic we're going to discuss with Dr. Wong is on low-dose naltrexone and its use in autoimmune disorders. Welcome, Dr. Wong. Thank you so much, Jake, for having me on. Really appreciate it. So could you take a moment and just kind of introduce yourself to the listeners and the viewers um, about yourself, your practice? Sure. So I am co-founder and owner of Capital Integrative Health, which is an integrative and functional medicine and wellness clinic in Bethesda, Maryland, which is not too far from Leesburg, um, right in the DC area. And we uh, really focus on wellness, you know, optimizing wellness. We also focus on reversing and dealing with chronic disease and particularly looking at root causes of why someone might be having chronic health issues so that they can get their life back on track and enjoy their life. So um, that is our, our clinic, uh, Capital Integrative Health. I am a, a doctor that medical doctor that's trained in both uh, traditional internal medicine and uh, having done my residency at Georgetown as well as more advanced training in integrative medicine through the University of Arizona, as well as a certified practitioner with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Um, in addition, I do have some medical acupuncture training, although I don't use that as much in my practice, although I think that's also very beneficial. Great. So I'm so excited to, that we were finally able to coordinate our schedules and uh, get this episode uh, yeah. recorded. You have used low-dose naltrexone in your practice for many years, and you've actually given some uh, talks on it. So uh, let's get started. Um, and what is low-dose naltrexone, and why is it called low-dose naltrexone? Yes. Well, uh, well I've, I've used low-dose naltrexone for about 10 years now. I started using it in 2012, so it's been about 10 years. Wow. Naltrexone uh, was first synthesized in 1963 as an opioid receptor antagonist, and it was approved in 1984 by the FDA for treatment of opioid addiction, specifically with heroin and morphine addiction. Um, so the typical doses that are FDA approved for what I call high dose naltrexone or more conventional naltrexone for opioid addiction will be 50, 50 to 100 milligrams. Um, and so naltrexone is structurally related to naloxone, which is Narcan. But I think for purposes of low dose naltrexone, this is a lower dose of naltrexone. Again, the higher dose would be between 50 and 100 milligrams. The low dose is usually between one to five milligrams, although the range is probably more like 0 0.5 to six or so. But that has a different physiologic effect than that higher dose naltrexone. Uh, there was a doctor um, in New York City, actually, Dr. Bahari, B I H A R I, that did a clinical trial of HIV patients in 1985 at the SUNY Downstate Medical Center. Um, and at, in the 1980s, when the AIDS epidemic was happening, he discovered that low-dose naltrexone actually helped these patients with low CD4 counts, et cetera, actually helped their immune system function and balance and quality of life. So then he started researching other conditions for low-dose naltrexone, things like uh, chronic inflammatory conditions, uh, whether we talk about things like fibromyalgia or chronic pain, or uh, even even chronic infections like Lyme that's been studied, as well as autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's and many other conditions. But I would say in the past couple of decades now, many integrative physicians and other practitioners have used lotus naltrexone as a supportive treatment for many conditions in conjunction with the other integrative and functional treatments that we do. It is considered a compound medication. That's why we send the LDN prescriptions to UJ uh, Compounding Center it's not FDA approved for any specific condition, but we found clinically that off-label low-dose naltrexone can really help for, for a lot of conditions. Great. So, you know, um, you've been using it uh, for the last 10 years or so, and would you say uh, it's quite safe to use? Any common side effects that you uh, have patients uh, complain about? Yes, Jay. Uh, LDN, I've found to be very safe. Um, 
very safe. In fact, I would say the major side effect, which occurs in a minority of patients, you know, I would say probably less than 20% of patients have some sort of vivid dreams or kind of weird dreams or insomnia. And, you know, it's not everyone, but there are, there is a subset of people that do, do have that. LDN has been traditionally, um, uh, sort of recommended to take in the evening based on the, the sort of physiology of it. Um, basically the opioid receptors are blocked. Um, and when you block it at night, then you have more of an endorphin rush and that is augmenting the natural endorphin kick that you get between two to 4 AM. So you typically want to take it about four to six hours before so that might be like, you know, nine or 10 PM. So that's when you should take the ideally for best physiologic effect. However, since some people get insomnia from it, and, and again, a minority of people get insomnia from it, but we'll just switch people to take it in the morning with breakfast and then they don't have any problem with the insomnia. I don't really see a lot of other side effects from it, honestly. Um, I think uh, you know anything could cause nausea. Um, it, I will say that LDN has not been formally tested with breastfeeding or or pregnant women, although we have used that uh, in breastfeeding or pregnant women without any adverse effects. And um, it also has a very short half-life of six hours so that I, I think some patients have asked me this before, if they had a knee surgery and needed some acute actual opioid medication, could they get off the LDN without any, you know, cold turkey without any withdrawal symptoms? And you can do that because of that short, ha short half-life. So, you know, um, uh, so, you know, uh, LDN is uh, uh, a pretty uh, uh, big part of our practice, and we too field a lot of questions on vivid dreams. Uh, and usually that subsides, I'd say, about a week to 10 days later. Um, and, and, you're, and you're correct that the half-life is very short. You can really eliminate it all in 24 hours. So, yeah. Um, um, now, uh, did I interrupt you? Uh, you were going to say something else. Um, I think I was just going to make a point about the high dose naltrexone at 50 to 100 milligrams. That dose, which is more FDA approved or that dose of that FDA approved has been tested for safety and that's been found to be safe. So if you just kind of logically think back to the high dose is safe. So the low dose, you know, even though that hasn't been tested at low doses, but there's no known safety issues and it's likely to be safe as well. Right, great. Right. So could you uh, uh, perhaps uh, go over some, uh, some success stories that you've had uh, with patients in your practice over the years? Uh, this will just give a chance to the listeners and the viewers to kind of, you know, uh, experience how well it works. Sure. Yes. So I think, I think the first, the number one thing we see um, in terms of hormones would be autoimmune thyroiditis, also called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that's a condition where the immune system attacks the thyroid, causes inflammation of the thyroid, and then has destruction of the thyroid gland, which leads to decreased levels of thyroid hormones. And of course, what that's going to manifest that in an individual with low thyroid hormones might be things like weight gain or the inability to lose weight, things even that you don't think about with low thyroid. I know you've had guests on your podcast that talk about Hashimoto's and thyroid, but you know it's going to be things like fatigue and hair loss and joint pain and maybe even irregular periods. Um, and so all these, all these conditions, all these symptoms can be actually caused by autoimmune thyroiditis. And we know that lotus and trexone works in part to increase what's called the T regulatory cells, which means that basically will or can stop autoimmunity in its tracks or make it much less severe. So we've had like, for instance, 35 year old woman with Hashimoto's with elevated thyroid antibodies. That means the thyroid is under attack by the immune system. And once you put that person on, you know, she put her on LDN at a, a low dose, like 1.5 milligrams, along with some other nutritional modulation, maybe taking out gluten and dairy, reducing inflammation, then her numbers start going down in terms of the thyroid antibodies start going down, her hormone levels start going up, and she feels better. You know, she has less joint pain, less fatigue, she's trying to, you know, lose weight, which she's trying to do if she's, you know, she's been overweight for the first time in several years. So, the LDN can be a really good complement, I think, to our nutritional programs that we have here, as well as, you know, some people might need thyroid medication, but they might need less thyroid medication if they're on something like low-dose naltrexone. Gotcha. Um, 
How about anybody with uh, chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia? Um, um, any success stories there? Yeah, so so definitely, definitely, uh, let's say a 55 year old with chronic pain and fibromyalgia, you know, basically fibromyalgia being also an immune system type of condition where the muscles are aching all the time. You can't really do much, can't really function uh, because of that chronic pain. So we see uh, that, you know, with this patient 55, you know, putting them on, on low dose naltrexone. And, and I would say that the research is usually done at a higher, slightly higher dose of low dose naltrexone. So the target dose is usually about 4.5 milligrams. So for her, we ramped her up to 4.5 milligrams, which we'll typically do uh, at plus 1.5 milligrams every month. So by, th by month three, we're at 4.5 milligrams. So you get 1.0 milligrams, 3.0 milligrams, and then 4.5 milligrams. So by month three, she really you know, had a pain score of uh, two out of 10 instead of eight out of 10. And so she was able to walk better, not have to take her NSAID medications, things like you know, Advil or something. Um, and, and then another person that is, uh, has also a fibromyalgia type of syndrome, actually, um, actually it's more of a polymyalgia rheumatica. That, that's that's a definitely an autoimmune kind of condition. Another condition which is similar to fibro, but it's in terms of pain, uh, that person was on steroids and we were able to get her off steroids with, with the use of the low-dose naltrexone. Wow. So, you know, at the pharmacy here, we make no low-dose naltrexone in a tablet form. We also do a sublingual form um, and our tablets are scored. So we make them in strengths of 1.5 milligrams all the way up to four and a half. And someone who is uh, a little bit more sensitive can almost split the one and a half in uh, one and a half milligram tablets in half and start at a 0.75 uh, milligram dose. And have you, do you use any, do you, do you usually use the oral dosage form or have you seen different results with sublingual? Uh, could you share your thoughts on that? Sure, sure. I've, I've started to use, uh, I've always used the, the, the oral form, either, either capsule or tablet. Um, you, have, you have tablets there, so and we use tablets there. But I, I would say that, and, and the tablet's really good, like you said, because it's scored and you can, you can break it up, you can make it a 0 0.75 milligrams. And, and I think from the perspective of that, that ultra low dose naltrexone, which is considered less than 1.5 milligrams, sometimes we'll start as low as 0.5 milligrams, but 0 0.5, 0 0.75 milligrams can be really beneficial for uh, some of the immune system. Sometimes you, you don't want to start at a, a higher dose, like 4.5, because that might tweak your immune system too much. Um, so I would say 90% of the time we're using tablets, um, you know, probably 10% or less we'll, we'll use sublingual, although I'll, I think that'll be a bigger part of our practice, you know, and as we kind of keep on going with it. Um, Lotus naltrexone sublingually, the benefit there is if someone has a gut issue, they have issues potentially with absorption. So when I say gut issue, I mean things like if someone has a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, or they might have something like chronic candida or parasites or H. pylori, or, you know, basically some sort of gut issue causing gas and bloating, then that's going to imply that they're not likely to absorb nutrients or medications or supplements. So very well or optimally or ideally. So we, if we look at it that way, then sometimes doing that sublingual would be helpful for someone with a gut issue because that sublingual is just gonna go right into the sublingual vein, of course, and it will go directly into the body and bypass the gut. So we are starting to use that more, especially for people with GI issues is kind of my answer there. Okay. Now, um, how long would you say does a person stay on low-dose naltrexone? Honestly, before I, I used to say, try it for a month or two and then just come back and we'll see if it works or not. And then if it doesn't work, we'll take you off of it. But a study done in 2019 at Emory actually showed that people that were on low-dose naltrexone for at least six months had a better pain response, had better results. So I think there's something about the immune system modulation that happens longer term. So I, I would... I would aim for three to six months, knowing the study results of that, I would try to have people on it for six months before making an evaluation of whether or not to go off of it or not. But I might tweak the dose uh, up or down, you know, during those first six months of treatment. My goal always as a functional medicine practitioner is to find the root causes of why someone might be having 
pain or inflammation or autoimmune thyroid, et cetera, fibromyalgia. So LDN is a good way to reduce that immune system inflammation as we keep hunting for some of the, the root causes. Of course, inflammation itself might be the root cause because some people actually have gut issues or infection issues that were treated by the immune system, by their own immune system initially, but then the inflammation itself continues to be ongoing. And so that inflammation might actually be the reason why the autoimmune condition, let's say, or the chronic pain condition is perpetuated. So we'll be able to figure out usually by six months, I would say, if it's, uh, if it's being beneficial to the patient or not. Gotcha. So Dr. Wong, could you uh, tell the listeners or the viewers, how can somebody reach out to you and get in touch with you? You've, you know, you've talked a whole uh, lot of information to us on low-dose naltrexone, and it makes me wonder, okay, how, how can somebody reach out to you? Yeah, so if you're interested in finding out more about what we do, especially with low-dose naltrexone and integrative health and functional medicine, we have a website that's probably the best place to start. So it's Capital Integrative Health. So that's uh, www.cihealth.org, cihealth.org for Capital Integrative Health. And then you can always um, call our, our phone number, uh, which can be found on our website, et cetera. We also have a Facebook group. So if you just search up Capital Integrative Health, we'll be there. And um, we also have a private Facebook community, which are all, all of your listeners and you, Jay, as well, are welcome to join uh, called Capital Integrative Health Community. And we are uh, doing some really great stuff on there as well, some community-based stuff. Great. Um, so you know, just to our listeners, uh, this is a little bit of a disclaimer that everything discussed today is just for informational purposes only, not for diagnosis. And... Uh, Dr. Wong, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I can be reached at j at compoundingcenter.com. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank, thank you once again, Dr. Wong. Thank you so much, Jay, for having me. Good to see you.